Yes, people, what's good? This is Visions in Tokyo, episode 12. I'm your boy, Johnny Dobb, and uh, today I'm going to head out and do a bit of a lens test. I've actually got two lenses that... Um, this one came out about four years ago. It's the Mitocon 35mm f0.95. And recently, Seven Artisans came out with their own version of a 35mm 0.95. And it's about half the price as the Mitocon. So I wanted to know how they fare up. How do they compare when using them out in the street? Now, I'm going to be straight up. This isn't going to be an in-depth test. You're not going to get all your charts and uh, anything like that. I mean, there's other places you can go and see all that information. This is all about hands-on use, out in the field, and just comparing the two. So what I decided I'd do, I'd head out into Tokyo, and I'd sort of take, a, I'd spend half an hour with one, then switch lenses, half an hour with that one. And what I did was I shot the first few sit, sets of photos using the uh, Fuji's uh, in-body colours. I used Classic Chrome for the first set, and then Acros. And then after that, I did some of my own edits. So um, I hope you enjoy the different looks of the of the uh, the images. Um, and yeah, and I just give you some of my initial thoughts on what I think of these two lenses and whether or not the seven artisans is maybe a good option if you were looking at getting the mitocon um because obviously price is a big issue and this one's about 250 dollars and this one's more around 450 500 so yeah enjoy the video and as always don't forget to drop a comment like subscribe do all that good stuff helps me grow the channel but without further ado let's get into it and go shoot some pictures Alright then, so for this video I decided I'd do a little bit of a narrative to accompany the video and straight out the gate I saw this young lady stood there with the light in the background. Uh, it'd be good if she maybe just gave me a signal or something uh, just to make the shot a little bit more interesting. Um, oh, yep, yeah, there it is. So that's the shot, classic chrome with the seven artisans. And here I saw this classic bug black and chrome had to get a little picture of this you don't see so many of these around I was quite happy with how this image actually came out here I saw this guy just standing in a pretty unusual pose uh, his body position so I thought I'd grab that um, yeah it came out quite nice it was uh, pretty sharp on him and then straight away I saw these salary men I used the line in the middle as a bit of a leading line last minute he looked up which I thought adds a bit of interest into the shot and again I was quite happy with how this one came in so here I was interested in testing out the lens flare um, and this is the image that I came up with it was quite subtle though in the final image it looked quite nice And just a picture of a random guy. I don't know really why I took this photo, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so you had this guy stood in front of all these lines. I thought it was quite interesting. Um, yeah, bit of a rule of thirds composition going on here, but I was quite happy. It wasn't quite the sharpest. And again, a classic car, so I thought I'd grab this. This was the last one that I shot with the Seven Artisans. Um, again the colours came out nice using that classic chrome. Now I'm switching over to the Mitocon lens and here we have a little frame within a frame. You know, are these two in love? Who knows? I guess we'll never find out but yeah quite happy with the result. Here's a stop sign. Again, don't know why I took it, just, just testing things out really. Um, but again, quite like the colours. And here I was interested by the reflections of the glass on the building. So I got this little, little, little snap. And here again, testing out the uh, flare on the Mitocon. Uh, it ends up giving a bit of a washed out colour, but there's a nice ringed flare, which I quite like the, uh, the end result. Right here we had some harsh light, so I wanted to try and get some high contrast images. And this guy walked past, just looked at the camera at the right moment. So yeah, pretty pleased with that one. And similarly, the girl on a phone, standard. You see, that's you know most people are on their phones these days, aren't they? But again, came up quite nice and sharp. Again, shooting at uh, f0.95. And here was a girl doing a bit of modelling. It looked like, so I thought I'd uh, jump in and get in on the action there. Now this is the last one, uh, shooting at 9.5 with the Mitocon. Bunch of kids uh, with their backpacks. Um, yeah, quite happy with how this one came out, although it wasn't really that sharp. 
Okay, so I've been shooting with the Mitocon for about the last 30 minutes or so and a couple of quick observations. Firstly, the aperture and focusing ring are um, they're smoother, there's a nicer amount of resistance. On the 7 Artisan, they feel quite twitchy and the tiniest little knock will just send it, you know, you're focusing right out, especially at 0 0.95. So just from this short time of using them, I, I feel like I'm hitting more shots with the Mitocon. Uh, I won't know until I've had a proper look later, but it certainly feels like that to me. Uh, it feels a little bit nicer to use, um, and I think it's just that resistance. Now, I don't know whether or not that is a manufacturing thing or whether it is with these two particular lenses, um, because you can have these slight uh, defects and, and not every lens it operates exactly the same. Um, but that's my first initial observation. Now I'm gonna switch back to the um, uh, the seven artisans lens and I'm going to start shooting it around f8 between f8 and f4 and uh, See how it feels. That's what I like to shoot when I'm out street anyway, but we'll see how that uh, Feels and then we'll switch back again and take another look and see where we're up to peace Okay, so now I'm shooting with across and I saw this guy. I don't know praying to the image I don't know what he's doing, but it made for quite an interesting shot the fact that the image is looking directly at me and here I saw a couple of uh, young school kids coming up in bucket hats, being from Manchester and a bit partial to a bucket hat. They again made eye contact, which was nice. Hello Kitty, not really that interested. But yeah, I saw another group of kids and uh, one of them happened to point at the camera at the right time. So yeah, pretty pleased with that one. And again, I like the contrast. Here we've got some guy in a flat cap and sunglasses looking absolute rude. So yeah, got him looking off to the left. What's he looking at? Guess we'll never know. You can make your own decisions on that one. And here we have some worker going about his business. Don't think he really wanted a camera stuck in his face, but yeah, he got it anyway. Yeah, I like the fact he looked at the camera just at the last minute and again, a guy on the phone. Here is a, a nice little ray of light and I want to catch somebody coming through the middle. Again, we get that nice high contrast looking image. It's pretty pleased with that one, but it wasn't the sharpest. And here I saw some guy with a trolley, thought I'd test out the uh, flare again and some nice flare there, um, but yeah, it's an okay image. Quick spin round and just caught this uh, woman in shadow, which I thought was quite nice. Again, with the A-cross, seven artisans. And here, just again, turned round just to catch a girl going past in the cap. Wasn't the sharpest, um, but again, uh, I was pretty happy. She's pretty close. Now I've switched to the Mitocon and I saw this interesting looking chap going about his business. Thought he had quite a, a, a character to his face. Just a standard pick this one. Again, just somebody on their phone, as per usual. Um, nothing special about it, but I thought I'd include it anyway. And again, a guy, another guy on his phone, just stood there chilling in the corner. And this is why you need to always have you always be ready and prepared. You never know what's going to come around the corner. A young girl, I like the way she looked at the lens, but unfortunately, just slightly not in focus. And here's a guy stood by some flags, chilling, reading some signs. Again, it's it's not nothing, not the best photo ever, but I thought I'd include it. A couple of women looked like they were reading some maps or something, and then this guy walked through, and again, he glanced at the camera just at the right time. So I thought, you know, it was vaguely interesting. And here's a guy stood by uh, with some shutters on his phone, again. People love being on the phone. Another guy on the phone, you know, but I was, I didn't have too long, so I just was grabbing whatever I could really, but yeah, it's okay, nothing, nothing special about that picture. Here's two guys, I think the guy at the back is his boss, making sure he's doing his job right. Go and do your job, mate. Yeah, he's off to do his job and he's taking his notes, and I thought that one was quite interesting. Okay, so I've done some tests with uh, both lenses. I'm shooting at wide open and around f8. Um, by now you will have seen the results of those. Um, and now it's time to get dark, so I'm gonna wait another 20 minutes or so for the sun to set, and then we can really see how these lenses perform in low light, wide open, as I go on a little mooch round and hopefully get some more cool shots. You dig? Okay, so we're back with the seven artisans. I saw these guys playing Mayong or backgammon or 
but yeah, it looks like Ma Young in a little boys club with the owl looking at me in the background. I quite like that shot. And here's one of these examples of these great little alleyways that you get in this area. And I'm using my own colour profiles on this, just trying to get something looking quite cinematic. There's a few shots down this alleyway. It's more about mood really, but you know, these photos are okay, not, not the best. Again, another one, guy on his bike, going about his business. Where's he going? Nobody knows. So here I was taking a photo between these uh, two bags of coffee. Uh, at a uh, bit of a peep in Tom look that one, but um, yeah, quite interesting. And again, another guy just chilling, going about his business in his work arms. Yeah, as I walked past this, I saw there's uh, some salary men having the dinner and turned around, this guy looked at me. So I thought it was quite nice just peering through the uh, window. And again, this guy with his walking stick. So here, as I was walking down this bit, a train was going by, so I decided I'd take a, a photo and turn it into a bit more of an abstract black and white. Really pleased with how that one came out. And uh, I really like this photo of the guy on the bus fixing the roof up. I don't know what he's doing, he's got a big stick. But yeah, quite like that one. And again, nice and in focus. Now we're in uh, the mit using the Mitocon. A couple of people walking down the stairs, getting those silhouettes. I do like that. And now all these, remember, are being shot at 0.95 on both lenses. So here, I actually missed the shot on video, but yeah, I took another one. I, I was here for a minute, but basically you have a guy walking through there and I did it in black and white. I just liked how, how that looks, has a bit of a mood. And here, I, I like the uh, the layers of glass. So I thought I'd quite capture that. And yeah, I was quite pleased with how that turned out. It gives a nice sense of depth. Here, I was more interested in the background, the, the lights. Just saw this woman walking by and caught her. There's some bit nice bokeh in the background there. And here we've got a bit of a frame and a frame and some leading lines. Again, I'm quite happy with this image. Nothing special about this, somebody doing some work in McDonald's, but okay, nice bit of mood. And this is one of my favorite little areas to shoot in this district, this little alleyway. It's usually filled with smoke and you can get some really interesting pictures down there. This is another little alleyway which is full of little restaurants. And uh, yeah, I like the composition of the, these two in this photo with the lines going off into the distance and the lights. And then the final image of this series, just a couple of salary men having a bit of a giggle and a smoke after work. So yeah, that's it. This area, um, Tokyo Station, Yurakucho, is such an amazing place to come to take photos. If you're ever in Tokyo, I recommend it. You have a nice mix of the super modern, the, the city, the, the skyscrapers, and then you have the, the old uh, izakayas and the smoky alleyways and stuff. It's just brilliant. You can spend hours here, and it's a completely different experience, daytime and nighttime. But with that said, what did you think of the photos? Um, and which lens did you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Me personally, just from my gut uh, feeling from using them today, I prefer the Mitocon. Uh, the resistance was nicer. Um, the image that I'm seeing on the screen looked a little bit sharper, wide open. Obviously, I need to go back and check them out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I preferred using that. Um, that said, for less than half the price, I would say that the um, Seven Artisans is an amazing lens for value for money for what you're going to get. It's hard to nail focus while wide open and maybe the copy that I've got is particularly loose. I don't know. I think if you get a chance to try one out before you buy it, then I'd recommend it because it's really difficult to get that focus right. Um, but that said, it has character. You know, we buy these super wide lenses for the character, not necessarily for the sharpness. If it's sharp, you know, that's a bonus. But but anyway, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of the images, which lens you preferred. And uh, as always, don't, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>